Welcome to Darshan America, folks. We come to you from Washington, D.C. My name is Ramesh Bhutani. And I'm Astha Verma. Today is September 11th. This is the ninth anniversary of 9-11. I know everybody remembers where they were when it occurred. And I sincerely hope that you have your, all the victims and their relatives in your prayer. I want to tell you the Muslims of America have gotten together and declared even though it is the Eid on 9-11 for the first time, but they will not celebrate it with joyous dance and other rituals that they have, but they will have the religious part of Eid on 9-11. This is also the time that Ganesh was born. That's right. This is a Ganesh Chaturthi, and the reason why it's so important is because Lord Ganesha is the remover of all obstacles. So we always pray to Lord Ganesh first for any Hindu-based ceremony. I also want to say congratulations to Asta for participating in a marathon, and many of them, I'm sure, were supporting the 9-11 victims. Actually, that's right. You know, my birthday is come to fall on a time of year now which is more somber and solemn. So this year was my first time running a half marathon. 13.1 miles, I was able to complete it in 2 hours and 86 minutes. Still pretty... Uh, Good time. Well, it's my first time, so anything I would have done would have been my personal best. But uh, uh, it was an amazing experience. You know, I didn't realize just how many people, some fifteen to 20,000 people run this race every year. Uh -huh. And they run for all sorts of reasons. Some run just to run. Mm -hmm. uh, such as myself. Other people run because they're representing causes or charities, but there were a remarkable number of people who were running for their service members uh, and for their sons and daughters who were overseas in Iraq and in Afghanistan. And I think this race in particular has special meaning because it is so close to 9-11. So we saw all sorts of cheerleaders and nurses. There were just uh, lines of people who were cheering us on, and it really was quite a special event. I'm going to try to do a uh, do this every year if I can. This Tuesday are the final primaries of most in all of the states that have not yet had one. Many states that are controlled by one party or the other, for them the primary is the final election. For instance, Washington, D.C. is a town where Democrats always win. So 14th of September, everybody's going to find out who the winner is of the November uh, election. So uh, in district, there is a tremendous competition, and I love it. You know, the mayor is running against uh, uh, and the chairman of the council. He was not even present in the race as much as three months ago. I mean, Mayor Fenty had $3.5 million, way more money than anybody else. And look, today, the race is so competitive. You know, the mayoral race in D.C. is very interesting because Mayor Fenty started out being so immensely popular and he had broad appeal in the city with all types of voters. But he has also taken on this air of arrogance and of uh, not working well with the council. And the council is starting to say, you know, we're a power force in the city as well. And you have Vincent Gray running for mayor. I think this is going to be a, a bellwether election for the rest of the country. About three months ago, when Vincent Gray, the chairman of the council, said, okay, he's going to run for Mayor Fenty's seat, I, sitting here, said, Mr. Fenty can win it if, if he decides to say, okay, I'm really sorry, I've been on the front page, everybody telling me that I'm uh, arrogant, I'll change myself, I will not be arrogant, yes, I will talk to you, I'll let you know where I'm going, and of course, I will not be giving contracts to my cronies or friends <laughs> or whatever. Uh, this would not have been there. And He's changed his tactics in the last one week. And that's how the national election is going I was to just going to make that point, is that Mr. Fenty has a lot of similar characteristics to President Obama. They're both charismatic people, and they both have been successful previously in connecting with people. And yet they've somehow both seem to drop out of touch with their main uh, base of people who support them. You know, the Time magazine, the headline, Mr. Unpopular. Nine weeks before the midterm elections, Barack Obama finds himself on the wrong side of the polls. So what happened to all that adoration? 
you know, and the Republicans are right there, ready to grab hold of this election. But, you know, Democrats are really hurting. They're not only hurting their paralysis up there, because if, if they stand with President Obama, they get beat. If they leave their base on President Obama, they still get beat. So they are in a paralysis mode. So this, this will be very interesting. By the way, Washington Post says, anytime President's personal polls go below 46%, forget it. They will lose Congress. This is what has been happening for more than 50 years, you know. I think there's going to be a lot of people who look at President Obama's performance over these past two years and wonder, did he do the right thing by putting out so many programs at once, right? There, there was this... Uh, sentiment that maybe he's going after health care, he's going after immigration, he's trying to solve the economy, that's too much on his plate. But I think he did that as a calculated risk that he could lose Congress in the next set of elections. And unfortunately, that's what seems to be happening. You know, when he took the office, the economy had just a meltdown at that time. And that was the singular focus people were looking at. And he created the $700 billion worth of stimulus, and he thought the job is done, that $700 billion is done, and let's take another project, which was the help for every American. He handled that one. And I really think that this particular problem of $700 billion stimulus was not done well. It has not yet created the jobs that there should be. So they're saying, well, he did it too quickly, and he...